guys, welcome to part two of the replenishment event vlog. In today's video, I will be changing the second day of the event, as well as share my experiences with you guys and what I've learned in the entire event. And there will also be an interview with Melinda Gates, our Prime Minister in Norway, Anna Solberg, and the Minister of International Development, Nikolai Astrup, which is really exciting. Um, and we talked about a lot of things, and specifically about women's rights everywhere and why it's important to invest in health in poor countries around the world. So yeah, I think that is it. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Major Lee. Definitely go subscribe so you can see more of my videos. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to leave me a thumbs up so that I know. And also comment down below if you have any interesting stories you want to share with me about why it's important to invest in health. And yeah, I think that's it. Let's get right ahead and get into this video. It is the next day of the event day two of the replenishment conference and I just bought a coffee because uh, it was a bit of a rush at home. Another day, another shirt, or what do they say? I'm on my way to the town hall. No, this that? We're just over there. So, see you guys. Oh my God, that's a tram. See you guys there. In the dark of the wave, in the sunshine of the rain, I can't help. We're at the city hall, so let's go inside. On this very magnificent conference in the Dwartusa, the day started off by a couple opening remarks as well as a round table with the president of the World Bank, Melinda Gates, Prime Minister of Norway, and the president of Burkina Faso. And after this very interesting talk about how they all find it extremely important to invest in health in children, women, and adolescents. All the countries represented at the event, as well as the World Bank and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, pitched how much they were going to donate to the Global Finance Facility, which they will invest in accelerators for better healthcare systems for women, children, adolescents in 50 countries around the world. The GFF will then use that money and all the data they collect to identify each country's individual problems to be able to accelerate these matters and make progress. What's going to happen? I'm going to interview Nikolai Ostrup, which is one of the ministers here in Norway, which I'm super excited about. And then after that, I'm interviewing Melinda Gates and our Prime Minister, Anna Sundberg, which is very exciting as well. Let's go upstairs. The vibe was pretty good after that because everyone there agreed that this is an extremely important cause to fund. And after the pledging session, it was time for lunch and my interviews. I really like what you said about empowering women all over the world. I couldn't agree more. All right, I am here with Nikolai Astrup. Um, and what are you doing at this event? I am the Norwegian Minister of International Development, and we're trying to raise over a few years two billion dollars, two billion dollars, to invest in health for women, children, and young people. And the aim is to save 35 million lives by. 2030. So every year, more than 5 million people, more than the whole population of Norway, yeah. die from easily preventable diseases. Okay. So that's not okay. So we need to do something about it. There's so many diseases that people die from that if it happened in Norway, in the US, in Europe, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. It's one of those great, great question of unfairness, really, mm. that where you were born determines your chance of actually surviving. I definitely agree. Reducing the deaths at maternal health, I think, is the most important part. Giving birth is the most dangerous thing a grown-up uh, woman does. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's uh, 
probably one of the big milestones that we have to do and it's what we have been trying to work on now. I have literally seen babies in the developing world die needless deaths that they don't need to die. But I was in Malawi where uh, there was one warmer and they had two babies on it. One had been born at the health facility and looked like he was going to see the day out. He was uh, had all the right vital signs. The other baby had been born, the mother was trying to get to the health clinic, uh, but had been transported very late and not in time. And she ended up giving birth out on the road on the way to the health clinic. And that baby, the vital signs were not good at all, lying next to the healthy baby, and was unlikely to see out the day. That is just a sign of a needless death. And when I travel around the world, mothers, love their babies the same, whether they live in the Norway or in the United States or in Africa or in India. We should be able to keep all babies alive um, in those situations. Okay, thank, yes. you thank you. So as you could have seen, those were some pretty informative interviews. However, I think we can all sum both the interviews and the two days of the event up in that around the world, in poor countries, there are five million children, women, and adolescents dying from preventable diseases. That means the entire population of my country, Norway, could be wiped out every year by diseases that could be prevented if the country had a good healthcare system. For example, provide information about pregnancy, consultancy during pregnancy, contraceptives, better healthcare systems to help you when you're giving birth. All these deaths could be prevented. And that is something that is totally not okay. And this event was to bring focus to that subject. And we need to invest money into accelerators that will help these things and make health in these countries and make the healthcare systems in the countries better. The big unfairness as Nikolai pointed out that some people should be privileged to have these rights because they're born in a country that has a good healthcare system. That shouldn't be the case. And of course, governments and organizations need awareness to all these matters so that they will put money and they will invest in countries around the world that doesn't have good enough healthcare systems for their people. Because as you heard, that is one of the key ways to gain sustainable development and develop as a country. So I hope you guys enjoyed these two vlogs and learned a lot, hopefully, about these that matters. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram where I posted all the stories about me going to this event and also wrote a couple of captions about everything I learned and that sort of stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Um, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye everyone!